Welcome to the Create Designer. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this um, magical landscape with a gloomy moon. And we're going to be using our own brushes. We're going to create brushes from pictures. We are going to use some masking and we are going to blend images together. So it's an easy tutorial and it should not take that much time. It's a good way to practice your skill in Photoshop if you are not that confident yet. Well, let's start it. First, I have this image of a moon and I want to make this a brush so I can use it in every single um, picture that I want. So with the quick selection tool, I'm going to select my moon. It should be easy because it's a circle and I'm going to go to select in bears and erase the background with the erase key then select in bears again to keep the moon selected and when I have it I'm going to go to edit define brush preset now this is important uh, the picture of the moon that I chose has a high resolution and as you can see the top resolution that I'm going to get in my brush is going to be 1752 pixels. If you pick an image with a low resolution you can make a brush out of it but what it's going to happen is when you're going to use your brush in another picture with a higher resolution you're going to find out that your brush is going to look pixeled. So you want to find big resolution images when you make brushes to ensure that your brush can be useful in every single resolution you're working to. So I'm going to save it as my moon. You can save it however you want. Press OK. And now I'm going to go to my galaxy image. I found this galaxy picture online. I'm going to deselect it. And I want to place my moon here. So I'm going to create a new layer. Why? Because then if I have my moon separate from the background, I can play with it, add effects to it, mask it, and it's going to be a flexible work. So you always want to make new images. I go to my brushes and surprise, my moon is here. I have my moon in every single tab on Photoshop that I want to. And I can save my brush as well so I can share it with friends or with different computers. So it's really easy, as you can see, to save a brush and very helpful. I'm going to set up my brush to a good size, maybe about 500. Yeah, that should be good. I'm going to paint it in white. And I'm going to do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clicks, nine clicks. Nine clicks is good. Brushes uh, from images appear a bit uh, transparent because they were by gamma. So the darker the value is, the more is going to appear in your brush. And the whiter the value is, the more transparent it's going to be in your brush. We're going to see it clear in the next brush that we're going to create. For now, this is good. I like my moon, but I want this... Uh, clouds over here to cover my moon. In order to do that we're going to create a mask. Masks adhere in the layer panel and we create it by adding layer mask. And as you can see in the layer of our moon, that I didn't name by the way, you have a mask now attached to it. You can deattach it, reattach it, let's keep it attached. And what it's going to happen is in a mask, when I paint on it, black hides and white reveals. So by picking a normal circular brush, if I paint in black, I'm going to hide my moon. So I can hide some parts, as you can see. I'm going to pull up the opacity. You can play with opacity too, to create your masks. There is. I want to pull up all the clouds from behind. 
And now the nice part of masks is, as you can see, I scrub here. I ate way too much moon. So I go to white and I paint on white, maybe with a smaller brush. And my moon reappears. So I can play with it. It's completely flexible. It's a not committed tool. And is very essential. I'd say I use masks in every single artwork that I do in Photoshop because it's just easy and I don't have to commit to it. So I can always go back, keep the moon outside of the clouds. So I got it. What I don't like is this pixel one that I have around my moon. So I'm actually going to keep using my mask. I'm going to go to black, high brush with not so much hardness, a really soft brush. And I'm going to softly erase the margin to give it a little bit more mysterious. I love the fact that my moon is a bit transparent and I see the background with these blue constellations. And you know what? I want to erase half of my moon, slightly half. So with the same brush, with no harness, I'm going to erase a little bit to give it more mystery. Maybe I pull down the opacity. I can play with all these things until I'm happy. And since we are playing with a mask and we are not committed to something, you can always go back to white and bring your moon down. I think I like this. So now we're going to add a forest silhouette right here and we're going to create another brush. I found this picture online and what we're going to do with this is adjust it so our brush works the way we want to. Like I said before, whites are gonna be transparent and blacks are gonna be solid in brushes. But what happened with this gray over here? Well, this gray is going to be opaque as well as this layer. I'm okay with this. I want the second mm, layer of trees, but I definitely don't want this sky here because I have my own sky and it's cooler than this. <laughs> so I'm going to go to images, adjustments, levels. And I'm going to pop up the whites, in this case, about... Until you can see that this area is pretty white, I think. About 110, it's a good one. I'm going to press OK. And with the layer selected, we do the same. Edit, define brush pattern, call it forest. And as you can see, this one has less resolution than the other. But that's okay, because for the amount of resolution of these pictures, it works. We're going to stretch it a little bit. Press OK. We go to our galaxy image. And create a new layer. It's going to call Forest Silhouettes. With the brush in black. You can see how the resolution is lower because your brush is a small Let's make it big. Oops. Maybe this is good. Okay. Press, press, press. And what I don't like is that I feel like all my light is here and here is darker. So I'm going to do a down and dirty flip of the image. This is not recommended because some images can appear stretched we are not being precise here but in this case i don't really care if my trees are a bit squished it's not going to make a huge difference and i want this tree in the middle i like that so i put it and now maybe i want another set of trees here so i'm just going to add within the same layer another set Maybe this time I do two clicks so it's softer. And now we're going to, with the layer selected, we're going to go to FX, Outer Glow. 
we are going to add, let's see if you guys can see, an outer glow of soft light? No, let's go for normal light because we want to see it. Not as aggressive, so we are going to make the spread smaller. We just want a little bit of definition on the trees. So it's easier to see because it's too dark already. Maybe a two. And the size, we're also going to bring it a bit down. Maybe to four. Spread a little bit more. You guys can play with this until you find a good spot. I like this. Um, maybe the opacity about 30. Yes, so I commit to this. I think it's opacity 30%, spread 4%, size 24%. Again, this is all about you. Press OK. And now, as you can see, we have a problem. We have this line that glows because our layer ends there. So down under, I'm going to just paint it black. Okay. Oops. With a hundred percent of opacity because we want a pure black like the brush. Paint black everything. So we don't have that weird line. Alright. I wanna add to my moon some glow too. So I'm going to the moon. Outer glow. And this time I'm going to do it in a soft light because it looks, as you can see, gives a little something and it looks blue because by soft light what you do is like you adapt your glow to where it's behind and behind there is this blue galaxies. I might spread it a little bit more. Yeah, I think I'm going to spread it at about 47. Press OK. And now I want to add some fog to the trees. So I'm going back to the forest. And how can I hide this to show the clouds? We're going to do exactly the same as we did with the moon, another layer mask. Remember, black hides wet reveals. So we're going to paint in black. Whoops. And what we're going to do is pull a little small opacity and make this. By playing with the opacity, what you can get is different levels of fog to make it more realistic. If you add way too much fog, you can always go back and clean the layer. See, I think I added way too much fog here, so I simply paint in white and I'll get rid of my fog. I'll bring again my trees. Keep painting. I like to, a good trick for me is to put a small opacity, maybe between 10 and 30, and build it up because sometimes that helps me. I like to paint and this to me is like more similar to a traditional medium where you add layers of paint until you find a good spot. You can also play with the harness, the different brushes. And when you are done, I'd say this is the final result. I hope you guys like this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you soon. Bye.